Welcome to this, some exclusive member content. And I thought it would be interesting for some of the people that follow the Tiger regularly to see the other side of the company, which is the, the business. Now, of course, you have sort of know me as the face of the Tiger, but really the Tiger is the strength of our team and also the management. And Michael Kenner here is not only the co-founder of DBV, but DBV is one of the main shareholder, or the main shareholder, for the tiger. So um, nice to see you today and nice that you're not yelling at me for a change. <laughs> you're welcome, thank you for, for having me. Uh, so why did DBV, as a sort of a big uh, multi-skilled tech company, have interest in a, a media business? I mean, truth be told, I mean, initially, the, the tiger was part of a company called the Phuket Gazette, which was a a very old, one of the largest newspapers in South Thailand. And it was a very old school newspaper. 23 years they'd been operating. Correct, and at one point I had a huge team of journalists and they're probably the biggest in, in Phuket or, you know, towards the end there was definitely more competition. And I think, unfortunately, they didn't innovate. Um, and, you know, the whole newspaper business moved online very, very quickly. And this is, we're talking about Cool. I wonder when that happened, probably, you know, early 2000s, it was probably, you know, well established and moving online. And in Phuket, it still really hadn't happened. It was still very much, you know, here's your broadsheet newspaper. Um, so we saw that business, they had real troubles. We thought that um, there was actually a gentleman called Bill, um, who's been on your, on your program a few times, and he suggested that we could probably do something with this. So we, we, we acquired the, the Phuket Gazette assets and everything literally but the actual physical paper correct correct so we only actually wanted the the, the platform because we thought instagram website facebook agreed and we wasn't too sure what to do with this and then you know well, we met tim and we knew tim already because tim had been in the business for a while and tim had a concept called the tiger which was at that time a just a radio station yeah and we thought this would be really interesting so we bundled it all together and we thought Okay, we don't just want to do Phuket. Phuket is an amazing market, don't get me wrong, but it's, it's a small market in relation to Thailand, especially Bangkok. So we thought that we'd probably have to rebrand the Phuket Gazette, and Tim had a great name, Tiger. And um, I actually thought it was T-I-G-E-R for a long while. Um, I didn't realize the play on Thai, you know, unfortunately. You know, not that great at that, obviously. But, um, and then it kind of all fell into part. It was purely an English medium at the time because the Gazette was an English medium. And obviously, you know, Tim speaks only English, uh, Australian as well. Um, I speak fluent Australian, <laughs> yes. So we launched the English um, business and it grew very, very quickly, like very quickly. And we were all a bit shocked at the, <laughs> the speed. <laughs> we were a bit astonished that applying a little bit of uh, sort of professionalism and rejigging the website and rejigging the writing style was so effective so quickly. Yeah, so uh, Tim created, um, you know, kind of a business model which, which we've named and we won't say it because it's definitely, you know, unique to what we do. Um, and it seemed to be working. It was really, really interesting. We just grew out of nowhere. I mean, because the, the thing is, is that an audience of, say, a quarter of a million, which is what the Gazette has, it is a great thing when you tell your friends, but when you're looking at the whole national side of being one of the biggest you know, media establishments in the country, it doesn't touch the side. So moving from, say, 250,000 all the way to a million users and eventually all the way up to, say, close to 10. In April last year, we hit our zenith, which was we had 22.8 million page views in one month. So moving from some 200,000 two and a half years before, that was pretty amazing growth. Yeah, crazy growth. And we, we'd never seen anything like this in any of our portfolio businesses where people were just consuming the news and the data. And we started realizing that, you know, because we have other portfolio businesses, so, you know, Tiger's only one of them. I didn't realize the actual pace of the growth, it was when I was going places and people were actually reading the Tiger. And I would ask people, hey, where do you consume the news? And they were like, the Tiger. I'm like, okay, I just thought maybe it was my area. So I'm in Bangkok, and people are there reading the Tiger. And at that point, I realized, oh, this is pretty big. Yeah. Um, and I think 
that kind of really led to you know where we are now. You know, on understanding you know that we are we've moved from a very small media you know company retrospectively, you know, and that's no disrespect to where the Gazette was, um, to a very large digital business in Thailand. And now we're probably you know this is that they were one of the top 100 brands in the country in relation to internet users, right? And internet is everything. So um, it's a really interesting position to be. And now we're just trying to look at how do we move the needle forward? Right. Be because it was, it was quite clear that we were able to generate traffic and a lot of people wanted to, to read the Tiger. But every business has suffered during COVID because of a, a, a lack of income. And our income from advertising drop through the floor so we've had to now look at other ways to sort of move on to the next stage these are probably some things we would have done anyway but the pandemic really brought brought it forward correct i think like um globally the media revenue is dying you know the traditional newspaper with you know advertisers going to purely news sites whether that's offline or online you know technically you know, the way Google and Facebook works and the advertising income that they generate from, from consumers and, and businesses alike, they've got amazing models. You know, why wouldn't you use these, these kind of a, these mediums? So media companies are struggling in general to work this out and usually because they're large organizations and you know, they're historically, this has been their segment of revenue and they cannot shift from it. And we already know that there is very limited money in producing news. I mean. It's a great, you know, we provide the consumers with news, but I mean, the reality is, is that we don't make pretty much anything from it, right? The actual news is, is free. We're providing it for free. And the advertising box, you know, is very, very limited. It doesn't cover the costs. And that's the reality. I mean, the way it works, you see an ad and you click on it, we might get two cents. Um, and most people don't click on ads, right, realistically. You know, Google will like you to click more ads, they make it more targeted and they follow you around a bit more. But the truth is, is most people just avoid the ads. So we now need to work out how we can create a business which is sustainable for the future because we want to provide the best news available in the market. We also need to cover the costs, otherwise, you know, all businesses fail. Well, we thought about robbing a bank. We came close, we came close. We saw a few opportunities in, in Thailand. Definitely. We're all wearing masks. <laughs> yeah, that's. It's so true, yeah. yeah, halfway there. It's interesting with the business model that we have, th there is a, obviously two strong partners that we have at the moment, they being Google and YouTube, who are very important to the way our business works. And a lot of the time over the past three years has been finding the best ways to use those two platforms as ways to propel our business. Is this a, a weakness of our business model or a strength? So, <laughs> it's, it's such a... I know, it's a big one. So, so Google is our best friend and our biggest enemy at the same time. And I've heard someone else say this to me about their business. We rely on Google for, you know, our distribution of our content, right? But Google basically takes our content and gives it away for free without even going to our business. Um, you know, we rely on Google for our advertising revenue. Um, but Google takes such a harsh large percentage for doing very, very little, right? And I'm, you know, so our reliance on Google and YouTube, and not just our reliance, but the world's reliance is definitely, you know, it's probably the largest ever been. And, and they, not likely to diminish anytime soon. Right, yeah, a huge, a Now huge, these platforms are not going away. Agreed, a huge monopoly on search and a huge monopoly on video. video. Um, and you know, the same with Facebook. So it's like, we're kind of in their control. You know, and you've seen this happen in Australia, where the news companies, you know, have kind of, you know, had, you know, had the argument already and working out to extract revenue. But there has to be drastic change for it to happen. Yeah. So, I mean, because these media companies are sort of uh, bleating that th these companies are stealing their content, but actually, in reality, these platforms are providing so much more access to their content. It's, I suppose, a balance of the monetization that needs to be sorted out. Agreed. And you, you can't blame Google because the reality is, is that a company like ours would never even have grown at the speed and pace and readership that we have if it wasn't for Google um, or YouTube. So, and it will be the same for any company in Australia, right? They've probably got international readership. And you would think that, oh, well, you knew the brand anyway, but you probably didn't, right? And you probably found out that the Washington Times was actually writing something interesting. And then now you follow them. 
Right, but you probably found that from Google. I mean, initially, the sharing of information. So I think that. Oh, and the other thing, I mean, this is to me the important thing from a journalist point of view, from a storytelling point of view. If you're interested in a topic or a news story, that you can now go to to Google or YouTube and you can search that story and see. 20 different versions of how different people interpret that story. Now, in some ways, that's a lot more con confusing for the, uh, the, the reader and the viewer. But this is the future of journalism, where there are just so many more voices now. Our job, I suppose, is to find a way to grab people's attention. Agreed. And, and just because you know, you're reading news, because we know how it works in terms of distributed and ranking news, yeah, we realize that you know what, what you read is definitely not reality or truth depending you know so you have to find like a one a reliable establishment that's going to publish news because the truth is, is that anyone can rank on google for news they've got something called the google news feed which allows you just to put news in and people can read it so it's, it's a very rocky and tricky situation for us to navigate with lots of you know non-professional establishments coming out and putting out you know, any form of content which is defined as news, which is probably not factually correct. And, and the second is, is helping us differentiate our products in relation to everyone else's. Because, you know, what consumers will say is if they don't read on the Tiger, they just read it somewhere else. But we're like, well, if you read it somewhere else, it's probably not being fact-checked because we know the news organizations here. There's some good, there's some bad, like everywhere. So I, th I think it's a very, very interesting dynamic which is changing and evolving across the world with, with the news side. One thing's for sure, as far as we know, is that there's going to be more video in the future and we're sort of going about the process of finding ways to produce more and better video. Uh, but it, you know, video takes time and it's more expensive to produce than just tapping out a story and this is, the, I suppose, one of the challenges we're, we've got at the moment. Um, thank you. Thank you for uh, being such a, an interesting and dynamic uh, sort of leader for the team and we appreciate your time today. Thank you. Michael Kenner, the co-founder of DBV, Digital Broker Ventures, and uh, they are the main shareholder of The Tiger. Good to meet him. And thanks for joining us with The Tiger. <laughs>